I'd like to welcome those who are present here today. And I'd also like to welcome those who will join us later on online. And we are gathered today and also in the time, in the time later on, we're gathered to celebrate the life, the faith, and the connections of Edna Soul. So we who have known Edna as mom, nana, sister, friend, family member, co-worker, we have all known her in our own way. And today is part of beginning to know her in a new way. Because Edna, in all the different ways that we know her, is still part of all of our lives, just in a different way. So we're making room for Edna in our lives. And, and this new way of making room, it's called grieving. And it's a process. It goes backwards and forwards. And sometimes it makes us sad. And sometimes it makes us happy. Um, just like in the hospital room, when we were remembering all of the stories about Nana, it was a bit happy remembering those stories, but it was a bit sad too. And so our time together today is all part of that. And we will begin with music. It is very intentional that we are gathered around the baptismal font. Um, we're, we're here in this space, all encircling that font for a particular reason. 
because it helps us to remember that Edna, mom, nana, sister, aunt, friend, church worker, organist, to remember that she began her life as a follower of Jesus when she was baptized. And that was when she and those who were with her that day heard the promise that Edna is a beloved child of God. And today we are reminded of that and we're comforted knowing that Edna is still a beloved child of God and she is in God's care. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the gift of Edna. Thank you for the time we had with her and be with us today in both the happy thoughts and the sad thoughts as we remember her life, her faith, and the relationships that were important to her. Amen. I'm going to call on Catherine to share some remembrances. I want to thank everyone here and everyone who will be listening um, from farther away uh, to join in remembering mom's life. My mother's love for being with people was incredible. She would make friends wherever she went and she encountered a lot of people. I often wondered if there was someone in North Battleford where she spent most of her life that she didn't have a connection to somehow. Her father died at a young age and her mother and five siblings had to make a home with not much money. The Lutheran Church was central to their community, so they all worked together. Mom played the organ at church starting at age 13. And then as she learned typing, she also started to help out with the bulletins too. Mom talked about grandma getting her and her brother and sister to wash dishes at a Chinese food cafe. Despite all this working to help out the family, they also had a lot of fun too. Mom liked, Mom talked about grandma rolling up the carpet and making a dance floor in the living room. So that, they, so that them and their friends could have a great time. Or having a house full of card players. Grandma supported mom's first exposure to watch professional baseball teams come to play the North Battleford Beavers. So in the early 1950s, baseball thrived in North Battleford and this was the start of mom's lifelong love of watching ball. She was a real Jays enthusiast. My mom, Edna, liked to infuse positivity in every situation she encountered. She loved how words work together, and often her love of language was expressed through these little sayings she used to address life's challenges, such as, Normal is only a setting on the dryer. Or faith related, the church isn't a hotel for saints, it's a hospital for sinners. Her conversations with people were infused with humor and sensitive listening to the heart of matters. This meant that people wanted to connect to her positivity and her hopeful view of life. She spoke openly about her faith in God. She saw her work at, at the church as the church secretary at Zion Lutheran and as church organist as a calling. She did the paperwork but also the people work of cultivating volunteers and supporting leaders and pastors and being there for all who dropped into the church. She was key to the functioning of many groups at the church. While well, the music was always flowing, whether practicing for the Sunday service or funerals or weddings or choir, her music were songs of praise and devotion to God. 
I loved sitting beside mom on the organ bench on a Saturday night and flipping through the hymnal, singing anything that struck our fancy. Mom married Alan Soule in 1960, and they worked out how to live out their unique passions together. Dad became involved in church leading youth, and Mom took on adventuring, camping, traveling. They set up a hill with Pastor Jerry and Joanne Larson, uh, ski hill, and then these copious berry picking excursions. Family and community were so important to them, and connections to both their families were close and often. Mom was a devoted and active caregiver several times in her life. Active mothering to me, I was privileged to spend so much time with my mom as I was growing up. She worked part-time and was always around when I got home. Then she supported her mother as she needed more care and faithfully took her out to the mall and visited the nursing home daily for after supper tea. Then she cared for dad when he was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And so for two and a half years, he was in the hospital and with the help of other family and friends, she supported him. When dad died in 1993, she joined a bereavement support group and then she led it for years. And so she took the opportunities that life gave her and um, turned them into opportunities to minister and to care. As life ebbed and flowed, what remained consistent was her connection to her faith and connections with people. After dad passed away, she retired as church secretary and began volunteering at the hospital as a greeter and at nursing homes to play for communion services. She again made friends and shared many smiles and quips. She made time with her friends, particularly on the Thursday afternoon bowling league for about 20 years. Constant were the coffee shop gatherings of different groups throughout her life. She was committed to getting up early to go meet a crew of friends or to meet up at the mall in the afternoon. She had a gift for being with her companions. She loved to hear their stories and always tried to offer support. Mom had many, many connections. The last years have been more about simple pleasures. Being with her grandchildren, participating in the Sherbrooke Day program, taking walks, having Dairy Queen Sundays, special snuggles with Prairie, the family dog, and then visits. The time has been close and comforting. She made the world a warmer, more positive place and wanted everyone to know that her faith was the source of her strength and that you could rely on her for encouragement and support. I was privileged to walk so many years beside her. Her loving encouragement and spark of joy were a light that shone from her and made such a difference to so many. We are thankful for her life and so happy that she lived so many years to enrich our world.
would like to read a passage from the Bible from Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And there's another Bible story that I'd like to share, and I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it because it, it's pretty long. And this is the Bible story of the beautiful Queen Esther. Now, Queen Esther was married to the king of Persia, but Esther wasn't a Persian. She was a Jew. And there came about this plot to kill all the Jews, all of the Jews in the whole kingdom. And Esther's uncle came to her um, and, and asked her to speak up for her people to her husband, the king. What can I do, she said. I, I might get killed myself. And her uncle replied to her, Think about it, Esther. Maybe this is the very reason you were born in this time and place. Maybe this is why you are here now. And so Esther, she risked her life and she saved her people from doom. Now, this story, even though it's a story from the Bible, it does not mention God directly. And yet, faith in God, trusting God, is part of the whole point of the story. And honestly, Edna reminds me of Queen Esther, a, a beautiful woman who lived out her faith. She may not actually have been a queen, that, that, that is true. But she took very seriously the possibility um, that perhaps this is why you have been put where you are. God put you where God put you on purpose. And the story of Esther does not mention God directly, and I, I think that's where Esther and Edna, their stories are a little bit different, because Edna certainly did talk about God and about her faith. But a number of the ways that she lived out her faith did not talk about God directly. Her faith, her love of God came through in many nonverbal ways or not, not ways that didn't have religious language. Her music, the many years that she expressed her faith through organ and piano. Um, and actually that's how I met your mom years and years ago when I was a seminary student filling in in North Battleford. Nervous, made all sorts of mistakes. Was really something I would rather not remember. <laughs> but your mom was so, she just, she just went with it. She was, and after the service, I might have expected any other organist to say, what on earth were you doing there? But she did not do that. She said, that, that was good. That, that was your mom. And I've also heard some stories about her donut shop ministry. Um, going to the donut shop every day just to, to be there with people. And her friends at the do donut shop, that's what they needed. They needed a listening ear. Um, they didn't really need someone talking to them with religious or church language. They simply needed her to do what she did. She shared her faith by caring. I think that the way Edna lived her life challenges all of us to find out why did God put you where you are? 
In her last days, Edna repeated again and again to herself the end of the Lord's Prayer. And I think that was because Edna's life, her very life, was a prayer to God. And at the end of the prayer is a blessing. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. And I will end each short prayer with the words, loving God. And you can make the prayer your own by responding, hear our prayer. God of grace, thank you for the gift of Edna, for all that was good in her life, and for the memories that we treasure today. God of love, hear our prayer. God of strength, your power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Give us the strength we need right now and in the days to come. God of love, hear our prayer. God of care, thank you for loving Edna. Let us know your love in our lives as well. God of love, hear our prayer. Comforting God, when we are sad, let us know that we are not alone. Hold us in your care. God of love, hear our prayer. Creator of all, by your mighty power you give life. We entrust Edna to your care, trusting in your mercy. Help us to remember the joy she brought to us and help us to honor her memory in our lives. Make us certain that because Christ Jesus lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to join me in that prayer that was so important in Edna's life, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, earlier I had said that um, in grieving, sometimes there's, well, there's the parts that are happy, like remembering time spent together. And sometimes there are the, the parts, the hard parts, that are sad. So now comes a hard part. Um, saying goodbye to the ways that Edna, mom, nana, sister, friend, the ways that she was part of your life up until now. And we tell God, even though we loved her with us, we're going to let her be with God. And we can do this because we know that God loves her and will take care of her. So we commend her to God's care. O oh, loving God, you are gracious and tender-hearted. You have created all people and you love all whom you have made. Have mercy on Edna. Take her into your arms of grace. Grant to her family and friends light in this time of darkness and comfort in this time of sadness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Edna, our companion in faith, we entrust you to God. Go forth from this world in the love of God who created you. In the mercy of Jesus who died for you, and in the power of the Holy Spirit who receives and protects you. May you rest in peace and rise in glory, where pain and grief are banished, and life and joy are yours forever. Amen. And a blessing for all of us. I'll move out of the way here. We have blessed Edna on her way. We've entrusted her to God, and now we leave also with God's blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you in grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.